Hey guys, it's Jimmy coming at you again, breaking down the LSX B15. Um, the reason why I do the videos that I do is to save people headaches and hassle. I wish people would support uh, and I could find some of the content that I need uh, to save me a heck of a lot of time. But um, in this case, I decided to do a quick vid because I'm not finding answers to these questions online. And I suspect there's a lot of guys out there that may be going through a similar build. They might be paying a shop to do it. Who knows? But we're building the LSX B15 uh, single turbo small block Chevy going into the 64 Nova right here, which has a whole new basically chassis underneath it, whole new suspension. But some things I want to tell you about the B15, because it is a um, kind of an orphan mix mosh of parts, like some of these GM crate engines are. Obviously, the block's unique. The head's unique. There's extra fasteners, extra clamping pressure on the head gasket. Um, but inside the motor, there's a lot of production components that come from some other engines and vehicles that are out there on the street. Um, so we'll get into that here, but we, you see online that people are prepping these motors. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of call this video the LSX B15 prep video. So what, what they do generally, um, the motor comes set up really, really good, um, you know, from GM. It's not the best I've ever seen. Like when I've built boost capable motors before, um, usually we're doing a bronze valve guide. We're making sure everything's forged in the lower end. Um, we're, we're making sure we have a very high grade stainless steel valve in there to handle the extra, um, temperatures in the exhaust chamber. Um, you know, we've already proven time and time again, I think with this motor that what GM's done is, is, is pretty substantial. It's adequate for, they call it B15 because it, it, it means 15 pounds of boost they've certified it for. Um, we're probably going to throw a little more than that at it. And time and time again, it's been proven to handle it. Um, so <clears throat> some things that you need to know as an owner of this, especially if you're, you know, putting it into a, a vehicle or you're, you're doing a cam swap. So let's, let's start with the cam swap. Um, very, very important point because you see these videos online, they make it sound so simple. Hey, hey, we'll just do a cam swap. We'll just put a Brian Tooley cam or a comp cam in there. It's so easy. Well, really it's not. Um, some of the reasoning behind it is the valve train on the LS, while it's a great engine design and everybody raves about it and everybody loves LSs and, you know, um, basically creams all over them. The reality of it is <clears throat> to set valve lash was so easy on old small blocks. You'd have a rocker, you'd have a lock nut, uh, you would wind that rocker down until you had zero lash where, you, you know, your push rod had no play in it, you had no up or down on the valve tip. And then usually, depending on what you want your preload to be, you do another turn or maybe a half turn or three quarter, or maybe even over a turn, and you're done. You're done. You got a good setting. You got a good valve lash adjustment. On these motors, you're not going to do that. The lash is controlled by the push rod length only. So the rocker itself uh, dead heads onto the boss and the casting of the head and you really have no lash adjustment whatsoever without changing the push rod length. And for those of us that don't have local performance stores anymore, you're mail ordering this stuff and you're doing all these different things. I think the good news is the base circle of most aftermarket camshafts compared to GM and production camshafts are the same. Meaning, whatever push rod you take out of here, you should be able to use the same length push rod with your with your new camshaft. As long as you don't cut the head, mill the head, deck the block, take any material off of those areas, you should be good with the same push rod. Now, the way they want you to check that is 
to install the rocker, tighten it down until you have zero lash. And once you have that, they want you to go a turn to a turn and a quarter with a ratchet and achieve your 22 foot pound torque on your rocker bolt. Um, the issue with that is on a brand new motor, your lifter may not be pumped up with oil and you may do that test on, on one rocker. You may get a yield there that you're comfortable with. And then you might come back and try it again with a different push rod length and you'll realize that you're getting some whacked out completely different setting. Well, that's because on your first go around, you just push, you just dump the oil out of the lifter and now you're not getting a good reading. Very confusing. Another thing about it is, um, the amount of turns that it takes, that everybody talks about these turns. Well, what size driver are you using? Are you using a quarter inch ratchet, three eighths, half inch on a torque wrench? And of course the ratio that that spins is gonna be different based on the circumference of the, the ratchet wrench itself. So there's a lot of in inaccuracies to this and I'm not even sure how close you really need to get on push rod length. Your main concern is that First of all, you're not having coil bind where you're bottoming the valve um, and the keeper down completely to where you would damage the, the spring, bend a push rod, etc. But on the other side of it, you want to open that valve enough to take advantage of the high lift of the lobe that you just paid a lot of money on that cam for. You want to achieve that, that greater lift and valve reach into the cylinder so you're getting the maximum performance. So you do want to at least try to make sure that you're putting the right push rod in these things. Another thing to make you aware of is uh, Brian Tooley sells you the spring kit or Summit Racing does, our, our, our you know, uh, performance experts, right? And, and they give you these LS spring locators, which go at the bottom, right? The spring sits right in, right inside this locator. So it's supposed to drop down, and, and obviously I have the valve train, you know, mostly disassembled here. It's supposed to drop down over your valve stem and down over your guide, and it's supposed to seat perfectly down in there. But if you look at it really, really close, you're going to notice that it's not it's actually up off the casting of the cylinder head by maybe, you know, 50 thou or more. Not good. And a lot of people would not notice that. Why is it doing that? Well, at the bottom of the guide, you're going to notice a ridge right here. And that ridge, see if I can get you a good, good shot of it. That ridge is um, what's, what's basically keeping the locator up off the uh, valve stem itself. So um, th that's called a stepped um, valve guide. So now Brian Tooley has to send me um, larger diameter locators, which I'm being told are used on a bronze valve guide, even though this motor does not have a bronze valve guide. Um, they're gonna have to send me these with a larger hole in the middle so that it'll drop all the way down. Again, a unique property about this particular B15 motor. And I believe, I haven't read everything, and I probably did read everything, but I'm forgetting things, but it probably has a bigger set of valves in it, which means it has a bigger set of guides, and that's why we're getting into this issue. So definitely something to, to watch out for there. Um, the flywheel which uh, fits almost every LS. This is a TCI variant of a performance uh, flex plate, 399753. Um, does not fit this engine, this LSX B15 engine. You might be led to believe that it does because it fits almost every other LS family. It fits 4.8s, 5.3s, 6 liters, uh, LS 362s it fits. It will not fit this motor because it has an LSA crank in it out of the supercharged GM motors and that has eight bolts in it and none of the holes line up with this with this flex plate. So yet another unique trait um, about this. Another thing, when you're swapping the cam and you've got the front cover off, 
You'll notice some differences behind here. Nothing major. Your cam retention plate says LSX on it. Kind of similar to the black here. Of course, you'll never see that. It's behind the cover. Uh, the timing gear, the sprocket on the cam itself, instead of having the dot dimple on the tooth, it kind of has this um, notched mark on one of the teeth with a, with a paint stripe. That is your locator um, for your timing mark when before you pull the cam out. So that points straight down towards your other sprocket. Then you remove your, your factory cam and, and you put your other one in and you make sure that your dowel's lined up with the gear in that position with the timing mark, the paint mark all the way down, and then your timing will be right. Um, by the way, torque to yield bolts on the, uh, on the cam coming out of here. They're these guys right here. Um, they, I could be wrong, but I believe these are torque to yield, which means they're a one shot deal. Once you tighten them and they were tightened by GM at the factory, you're done. And they're not supposed to be reused. When I was torquing them with the torque wrench, I didn't like the feel that I got to get to the 26 foot pounds or whatever it was. For those of you that have done a lot of wrenching, you just know when a bolt isn't feeling right. It almost gets that strip feeling. I did achieve the 26 foot-pounds on the snap-on torque wrench, but I just, it didn't feel right. So make a long story short, I pulled those bolts out, replaced them with ARPs. They torqued down beautifully. We're done dancing. So um, one other thing, oil pan selection. Again, we're running a turbo. Holly basically makes several of these um, depending on clearance that you need and if you're running a turbocharged application and you need to uh, bring oil back into the pan and push it out. So in this scenario, I ran the 302-3 pan, which gives you a lot of clearance and it's set up for turbo application with drain backs on the driver and passenger side. And you, of course, have your pressure adapter here. They supply you with a block off in case you don't need it, but ultimately we're going to put an adapter on here that, that gets us to an AN fitting, gets us up to our oil feed on the turbo, and we're going to drain it back into the pan on one of either one of the driver or passenger side here. But very important point is that the LSX B15 has a full-length windage tray in it, meaning in order to make this pan fit, you're going to cut that windage tray way back. You're going to cut it way back into here. You're probably cutting a third out of it because it will not clear up in this area on the front couple journals of the crank. So um, so just be aware that you can order a, a different windage tray that's much shorter or you can simply mod the stock one that comes in the, the crate engine. I decided to mod it and um, and everything was just fine. And you know we, we put it together. So uh, where am I at now? I'm waiting for the new locators. Um, that'll allow me to assemble uh, the valve train. Uh, we got the pan on. We'll pop the valve covers back on. We're going to bolt the trans and converter up to this thing. We're going to get it in the car. Um, we're going to we're gonna start making solid progress on this project and, and get the plumbing done, get this thing running. We're going to be doing some TIG welding and figuring everything out. The... Um, the, oh, another thing, the, the spring tool that, uh, the, the, for example, this Lingenfelter one, and I, and I like Lingenfelter, but this single spring tool, which they say is good for all LS engines, um, really isn't. It's, um, I wouldn't recommend it for, for this particular engine. I, I would use the, the, the double spring tool that a lot of people use which, you know, you can, if you want a really good one, you're going to be tearing down LSs all the time. You can spend a couple hundred bucks on it, or you can buy the El Cheapo off of uh, Amazon for like 30 bucks, and it's probably not going to work phenomenal, but it works um, a lot better than the single that I just showed you. And then uh, one last thing is that a lot of people are telling you on the B15 that you should change out the trunnions on the rockers. Um... I don't agree with that. The, here's the comp kit right here. You can see it's got a needle bearing bearing trunnion in here. Um, you can see the, the trunnion shafts that, that it comes with. And that could be designed to go into something like this, which has been a micro polished, uh, you know, stock rocker arm, which is actually, these are really nice. But the rocker arms that come with the B15, and I don't know if you can see it, but they're already a needle bearing 
rocker arm, rocker trunnion. And you can kind of see them in there. You got to look really close. But um, I have no problem with the stock rocker. So for me, you know, I'm turning 6,500 RPM or less. That's how this motor is going to be set up. Stage two, Brian Tooley cam. That's why I didn't go with the stage three. The way that the intake, the the, the style of intake that I'm going to run on it, the RPM range, etc. I'm 6,500 and below. So for that setup, 6,500 and below, I have a awesome set of valve springs and keepers that I bought from Brian Tooley. <clears throat> and they're double beehives, supposedly the best out there. I've got a um, roller bearing rocker. I've, I'm going to have a beefed up push rod in here. For me, I'm good. I'm I'm good there. I'm happy. I I'm th that's more than adequate. Uh, some of the, some of this other stuff, the micro polished rockers and the uh, the comp cam system and everything, I I just don't feel it's necessary. So that's I'm going to be happy with what I just mentioned. So anyway, that's that's kind of some of the secrets of the um, of the B15 that I've come across so far. I hope that it saves some other people some trouble. Uh, you know, on, on what they're going through, because these were a lot of things that I was not aware of that I had to discover on my own. Uh, reach out with any comments, questions, I'll attempt to answer them. And um, uh, thanks for checking it out. See ya.